I am so late to the party on this song. I I first heard this song on Chris Cornell's um, acoustic solo album, Songbook. I mean, I know Temple of the Dog. I remember when Temple of the Dog came out, but I never got the album. I just knew, you know, Hunger Strike and, and Say, Hello, Say Hello to Heaven. So um, after... Chris Cornell died. I I listened to I I bought the songbook album and I just I listened to that over and over because his death um, uh, affected me more than I thought it would. So I started to to really go back and, and listen to Cornell's work. And then I uh, so after hearing the acoustic version of "Call Me a Dog" over and over, I went to the electric version. So I heard the electric version. And I was like, oh my god. And then I said, well, let me get the whole album. So I got the whole Temple of the Dog album. Like I said, I, I knew some of it because I remember when it came out. But um, I want to just focus my attention on "Call Me a Dog" because it's it's probably the it's yeah it's the best song on the album. It, there's it's the album's full of strong songs, but but this one's the best. And like the album itself might be Cornell might be. I haven't listened to all of Cornell's um, solo albums. I listened to all of his Soundgarden work, which is awesome, and Temple of the Dog, but. So far, I haven't heard um, all of his complete solo albums yet, you know, in his work in Audio Slave. But um, so far, his vocal performance on the Temple of the Dog album is probably his best, and, and that's saying something. I mean, it's such a high bar to, to compare Cornell's vocals. But um, I think Call Me a Dog kind of exemplifies how great a vocalist a vocalist he was, as well as a lyricist. He's pretty good at, at being self-deprecating or describing a very depressing situation and making it making it um, artistic uh, and and just loaded with feeling. And he can just make it so relatable and just with his voice and the music and the lyrics, just that com- combination of those three just hits you in the gut and, and, and helps you to feel. I mean, that's why I listen to music. It, it really helps me feel. Um, so, um, so we can start with the lyrics and, and the lyrics are, you know, they're, they're pretty straightforward, um, but still great. And just the, um, the metaphors that he use, uses is just awesome. And the song is, is obviously about just a terrible relationship, just the give and take about, what happens if a relationship isn't good? So um, I think he um, he points that out real well. So uh, let us begin with the lyrics. So they start with, you call me a dog. Well, that's fair enough. So again, this is already him punishing himself. And, and he's dealt with, with depression. Uh, he dealt with depression, I should say. And... Um, and and I, I would imagine part of that is putting yourself down and, and not having compassion for yourself. And, you know, and, and I, I Fell on Black Days uh, is, is another song just that highlights depression and, and the symptoms of it. And he just, that's another song that he puts, you know, into art so well. So he's already putting himself down. He said, well, you call me a dog, that's fair enough, because it ain't no use to pretend you're wrong. So, like, I can just picture him arguing with whoever he's arguing with, and either this is going on in his head, or he says that out loud, either as a way to describe himself, or maybe try to try to get some pity from the, the, the person, his girlfriend, or, or whoever the subject of the song, song is. Um... So you call me out. I can't hide anymore. I have no disguise. You can see through. So again, self-explanatory, but again, it doesn't matter. Mixed in with the lyrics and the music, and just because it's self-explanatory doesn't mean it's not brilliant, because it is. Um, You say it's bad luck to have fallen for me. What can I do to make it good for you? So so again, it's it's the woman... um, arguing with him, saying saying bad things. So now he wants to turn around and say, well, what can I do? What can I do? But now he kind of pushes back at her. Um, it's kind of like, you know, having a bird's eye view of this this argument, but but turned into art. You know, art is pain, man. And, and you know, and that's what uh, some of art is pain. I'm not saying art can't be pain, but, but a great deal of it is. So, and, and it's relatable pain. So he says, you wore me out like an old winter coat. 
trying to be safe from the cold. So he's telling her, I said, listen, this relationship is wearing me out too. And you have worn me out. And, um, so he kind of says that like she uses him as a way to, for her to be safe from the cold. So it's either the, the coat (laughs) is trying to be safe from the cold or the woman that he's arguing with is using him as a way to be safe. And he just, he gets worn out. It can be taken both ways, I think. And that that's what makes art and lyrics good. Sometimes there, there are many facets to this, you know, depending on whoever's interpreting it. So, but then when he says, uh, and this is the chorus said, but when it's my time to throw the next stone. So it's like, he's going to, He's going to get back at her. That's it. It's going to be my, I'm, I'm going to throw a stone now. That's it. You know, and, and then it's, it's from that, uh, from the Bible, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. So it might be a, um, a reference to that. And, uh, Stone Gosser is one of the guitarists of Temple of the Dog, which I'm sure has nothing to do with that lyric, but he says, okay, so, but it, but when it's my time to throw the next stone, I call you beautiful. So when he wants to get back at her, he actually compliments her. But then, so he says, well, I call you beautiful. It's beautiful. So he's saying, well, see, I'm trying to be nice here. I'm going to call you beautiful. But then the next line is, if I call at all. So he may not even want to talk to her. He may not, may not even want to give her a call. Or may, he may not even want to um, uh, just acknowledge what she is doing to him or what he feels she is doing to him. So if I call at all, you call me a dog. So then, it, you know. Then more madness ensues. And you tell me I'm low because I slept on the floor. So that could be an allusion to, well, that's just who he is, you know, or that's just what he's doing. What, why is she calling him low for, for, for the person that he is? Like maybe he's saying, well, it's not my fault. This is who I am. So you tell me I'm low because I slept on the floor and out in the watch with the badgers and wolves. So maybe she doesn't like who he's hanging out with. That's, that's what I'm guessing anyway. You know, doesn't like who he's going out with, doesn't like who he associates, uh, associates with. And then he says, you threw me out cause I went digging for gold and I came home with a handful of coal. So that might mean, you know, when, when Cornell wrote this, uh, well, let me give you a little bit of Temple of the Dog history. So when Cornell wrote this album, he wrote it quick, and Soundgarden was starting to get some attention, but they didn't break it. So so he might have been still, you know, kind of poor. He might have been making a living as an art as an artist, but still very much struggling. And when this album came out, I believe it came out in 1990, um, you know, Soundgarden and Pearl Jam weren't popular yet. yet. So Temple of the Dog is a combination of Soundgarden and Pearl Jam, and it was written uh, as a tribute album to Andrew Wood, who was the lead singer of Mother Love Bone and, and a close friend of Cornell. And had Andrew Wood not died, there wouldn't have been a Pearl Jam. So, and it's, you know, these two prominent Seattle bands who were starting to get a name for himself, and, and obviously it affected, uh, his Andrew Wood's death affected Cornell, so Cornell wrote this for him. So, um, so again, he probably didn't have that much money to his name. So he's going out and he's, you know, digging for gold, trying to get success, you know, as, as, as a singer, as, as, as a rock star. And, and then he says, I came home with a handful of coal. So he's not providing. So he gets called out, uh, for not providing, um, you know, whether it's, uh, supporting her or helping just pay the bills and the rent. Uh, there's rumors that this song was about his girlfriend slash manager. So maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe she's yeah, his girlfriend slash girlfriend who became his wife. And she was also his manager at the time. So that can complicate things. Um, so maybe, you know, not bringing in the money uh, was, was an issue in their, in their relationship provided this song is about her. I don't know for sure if it is. Um, so, and then, uh, then it repeats, you know, when it's my time to throw the next stone, I call it beautiful if I call it all. And then he says, and when it's my time to call your bluff, I call your, I call you beautiful or leave it alone. So when he wants to say that she's lying, you know, calling her bluff, he'll still say that she's beautiful, try to compliment her because maybe he's afraid to say what he feels or he'll leave it alone, you know, just not want to 
get into this argument or not want to stand up uh, to her, to, to what she's saying. Um, so he, I guess he tries to take the high road by complimenting her or not saying anything at all, which, you know, isn't necessarily a good thing because if, if you're in a relationship with someone and, and you, something she does, or if you have an issue and to, to bury it, you know, just, just will lead to, just lead to more problems. So, um, and then, um, and then this is probably my favorite part of the song. So he goes, yeah, you call me a dog. That's fair enough. It doesn't bother me. And then this is where he just like gets, gets back at her. He said, it doesn't bother me as long as you know the bad luck will follow you if you keep me on a leash and you drag me along. So there's just so many things just in in that group of lyrics. It's the best part of the song because it's the crescendo of the song and he just like when when he says you drag me along, he just wails and it's one of his best vocal moments in just a gigantic history of great vocal moments by him, but he just gets so high and so passionate and it's such such a joy to listen to just th- this emotion that that he releases is such, such a joy. And it's you know it's him getting back to her, getting back at her. So he says, yeah, you call me a dog. That's fair enough. I get it. I'm a dog. All right. You know what's you know what's so bad about being a dog anyway? You know, um, he goes, that's fair enough. It doesn't bother me as long as you know. Now now he's now he's he's being self deprecating, but also telling her that if I'm gonna be around here, I'm you know it's it's not gonna bother me that you're calling me this, but just know that. If I'm with you, there's just going to be bad luck if you keep me on a leash and you drag me along. So meaning that if she treats him like this, you know, like an abusive dog, she's going to experience bad luck too. So it's going to affect both of them. So again, this is from his point of view. I don't know what the the woman's point of view would be, but, you know, it's it's his lyrics. It's his point of view. So I'm just – I'm taking this from – from from his side of it. So, I mean, that's that's a real jab. So it's kind of like, yeah, you can keep calling me names, but I just have you know that that if 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 you're going to keep me around and, and, and treat me like this, you're going to get bad luck too, you know? So it's just like, it's just one of these arguments that there's no winner in this. It's just going back and forth and back and forth, and it, it just shows how complicated a relationship can be. Um, and then, you know, the, the lyrics, there, there aren't any, any new lyrics in the song. So it's just, it's a slow song. It's just like, kind of like a strong ballad. It's in, you know, three times. So it kind of has like that, that a little bit of like a, a waltz, I guess, to it. And it's just a great, it's just a great musical and, and vocal performance, um, from a singer and, and from a band, I mean, Temple of the Dog you know, at the time was Matt Cameron from Soundgarden, the drummer, uh, Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, the the singer slash guitarist, and then there was um, Mike McCready, the guitarist from Pearl Jam, Stone Gossard, the guitarist from Pearl Jam, and Jeff Ament, the bassist from Pearl Jam, um, and then Eddie Vedder made an appearance on their big hit. It was a big hit called Hunger Strike, um, and Eddie was in at the time he just joined Pearl Jam. So I think Cornell just wanted a guest on certain parts of the song and, and, you know, and Vetter did, did the job for it. Um, but, and now Matt Cameron is in Pearl Jam for, you know, when Soundgarden got back together, Cameron was in Soundgarden and Pearl Jam at the same time. So you can imagine when it came time to tour, like I got, like Matt Cameron must've never been home. And I believe Matt Cameron is now, um, the drummer for the MC50, which is like the 50th anniversary of the band MC5, um, which is a just a legendary, like pioneering punk and noise band from Detroit. So I think Cameron's drumming for them as well. And Kim Thale, um, the guitarist from Soundgarden, is the guitarist for that band too. So it's like with Matt Cameron, I don't know how he sleeps or if he ever gets home, but he is just so prolific as a um, as a drummer. And Pearl Jam's touring at the same time too. So it's like like when does this guy ever go home or, or when? does he ever sleep so 
I mean, Temple of the Dog was definitely a super group, especially at the time. Like when this album became popular, that's when the Seattle movement was very pop. was just not even peaking yet, but it was getting there. And, you know, Soundgarden's Bad Motorfinger was out and Pearl Jam's 10 was out. And then this album was just more attention was brought to this album because of the attention from those two bands. And it just, you know, it just it just blew up. And Temple of the Dog themselves didn't start didn't tour until 25 years later they did you know a bunch of shows uh for for a while you know uh just just to do it because they never did it before and you know it's just it's it's a real shame after uh the death of cornell that that we won't have them uh around again either to make new music or to tour on the old music but um for those don't who don't have that album um i it's it's just you know, I'm very, 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 very late in, in listening to the whole album, so I, I highly recommend um, anyone who's out there to uh, to get it. So um, if you all want to get something, you can definitely uh, rate and share this podcast with your friends and your family or even your enemies. I would uh, very much appreciate it. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at MMA. M podcast. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.